Hello, today I'm gonna to be shifting gears on the channel. Normally I talk about AI models, the different products and services that are available to us, but I don't spend a lot of time talking about the underlying AI hardware, which powers and allows for all of these large language model or multimodal AI models that we see today. Well, today there was a very significant milestone which was reached by a company called Cerebrus. In today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through the significance of this announcement I'm gonna be explaining it from the perspective of perhaps a large language model user, a average developer, maybe an AI researcher. What does this announcement mean, not just for today and tomorrow? And I'm assuming maybe a lot of people haven't even heard of Cerebrus. They mainly target really big companies right now. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be sort of explaining why it's really important to be paying attention to Cerebrus um, and to start keeping them on your radar. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. To begin with, all the advances we've seen from modern deep learning are the result of advances in computer hardware. In the past, even though we had a lot of the theoretical elements, we simply could not compute neural networks of the size today. Fast forward to 2020, in the world of large language models like GPT-3 and multimodal AI models like Dolly, there is an, a known phenomenon known as the OpenAI scaling laws. The link to these papers is in the description below, but the key idea is as these models get bigger, they tend to generalize a lot better. Have you ever wondered why GPT-3 is so much better and more powerful and has so many more capabilities than GPT-2? The reason is because of the scaling laws which underlie all of it as a result of computer hardware. I've really summarized it broadly here, but specifically, I feel the scaling law papers, they show that the result of three things, so training data size, the parameter count of the actual model itself, as well as the compute time and power spent on the models, sort of increasing all three of these things at some proportion leads to greater generalization and greater capabilities like you see with models like GPT-3. For your own reference, and it's really important here, GPT-3 is 175 billion parameters. Fast forward to today in 2022 and going back to Cerebris, which was the company I mentioned earlier on in this video, today they broke a world record for training the largest language model on a single device. So they were able to train not GPT-3 scale, but GPT-Neo X scale of 20 billion parameters on a single system. This system is called CS2. Now to everybody else, this may seem like, you know, typical tech acceleration, brand new hardware. We're kind of used to these kinds of advancement. We take them for granted in the tech industry, but I actually think it's very significant for everyone in the large language model, multimodal AI space. To explain why, first you need to understand in the past, large language models such as GPT-Neo X, GPT-J, GPT-3, they were trained in parallel across maybe hundreds or thousands of devices. And not only does this require many hands on deck with expertise in infrastructure, but this is also not even the most efficient way theoretically to train a model. The CS2 is a single device which allows us to train large language models and dramatically reduces the cost and complexity of training. So again, not only do you not need all those experts on infrastructure uh, as your model gets bigger and it scales even bigger, you need more hands on deck. Uh, the significant advantage of the CS2 system is also the time to train or in a way this time to market is also significantly reduced. I've been told by representatives of this company, they can get your timeline down for training a large language model from a few weeks down to less than a day. As a result, this means AI researchers as well as companies commercially deploying large language models, this means they can actually iterate on the models themselves. If it takes less than a day to train something from scratch, you'll be able to actually experiment a lot more iterated on ways you simply can't do today in parallel. I also think through advancements like the CS2, not only will we be able to iterate on AI models, but perhaps improve them and actually understand why do they work so well? What actually makes them work at a commercial scale, at a safer scale? 
uh, these are the kinds of questions that are very interesting in research that are very difficult to actually answer today, but actually may be possible through the CS2. I also think the convenience of this system will lead to many more large language models or multimodal AI models in, in really interesting domains such as the biological or physical sciences. Being able to train GPT Neo X scale, again, 20 billion parameters on a single device is a huge milestone worth celebrating for the entire industry. And of course, all of this is along an exponential scale. Who knows what scale CS3, perhaps CS4 will reach in the future. So now that you know about this world record being broken, what can you do with this information? Well, I definitely recommend to, to most people watching this video, I definitely recommend you follow Cerebris and pay attention to what they're up to pretty closely. They're also hiring, they need tons of smart people. And so if you're interested in work which would benefit the entire industry at a huge level, maybe you should consider working for them. On top of that, I've been told through their partner Cirascale, uh, people can sign up and at an hourly rate try CS2 now. One surprising thing based on the developer resources I've been given in advance of the announcement today um, is how easy CS2 is to use. You can use it alongside TensorFlow or PyTorch, uh, whatever OS you like. Like it's, it's, It seems very, very convenient, especially considering all the heavy lifting it will do for you. And of course, finally, like if, if you're interested in perhaps large language model technology, commercial scale, maybe you're a startup all the way up to like a large organization, I, I actually recommend you reach out to their sales team. They will be able to explain CS2 a lot better and perhaps even help you navigate and think through like, you know, different things. Like, should you be training from scratch? Should you be fine tuning or should you start from a pre-trained model? For startups and organizations of different sizes, because of the benefits that I've already outlined, um, I think you may find the CS2 system may actually be within your budget as well. So I, I, I think it may be worth reaching out to, to the team and at least seeing what's possible here. Now, to be clear, I have absolutely no affiliation with Cerebris. This is not paid content. I just recommend you, 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 know, you work with them. The point of today's video is to, is to put this company on everybody's radar to congratulate them on this milestone. And one thing I, I really loved hearing uh, on, on my call yesterday with the company was just the, the excitement and passion they have about getting this technology in the hands of as many people as possible, rather than just a select few companies. So I actually think supporting Cerebris is, is actually probably a good thing for the whole community at large. Uh, more people should, you know, be supporting, working, partnering with this company, and of course, following along with their journey. Congratulations to Cerebris again. I understand this this kind of video is, is very different from the stuff I usually put out. However, I hope you enjoyed it, and it's given you a great summary of, of this milestone and its significance. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.